Hi everyone, Shireen here and welcome back to Beauty Editing 101. Today I'm teaching you how to make a beauty guru thumbnail with cutout makeup images. Stick around till the end because I'm also showing you how to fix common mistakes when cutting out images. Let's begin. <music> First things first, let's start off with the YouTube thumbnail dimensions. So once you open up Photoshop, press create new and then create a canvas that is 1280 by 720 pixels. And you also want to make sure that the orientation is horizontal. Now for the resolution, since this is going to be used on the web, you could put it at 72, but just for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to keep it at 300 because that's just what I usually do. Now just go ahead and press create and it'll make a new canvas for you. So what you want to do is drop in the image that you want to use for your thumbnail. I'm just using this one, a random old picture, just for the purposes of this tutorial. So to scale it up and make it fill the frame, you want to press and hold shift to scale it up proportionally and then go ahead and press OK. And now we get to the fun part. To cut out a makeup product from your own pictures, what you want to do is drag and drop that image into Photoshop. It'll just make a new layer and scale this one up as well by holding down shift. And now what you want to do is rasterize the layers so that we can go ahead and modify it. Something else that really helps me stay organized throughout this whole process is naming my layers. So I'm just going to name this one Pixie in the background, background obviously. Now with the quick selection tool, I'm going to scale up the image first just so I can see things better and it just makes it a lot easier when you're working with the quick selection tool to see exactly what you're picking. So now what you want to do is drag the brush over whatever item that you want to pick out. For instance, for me, I'm selecting this liquid eyeshadow on the top right. So all you want to do is just drag the brush up and down, make sure to get any sort of nooks and crannies if you will, just basically any edges. Sometimes the quick selection tool will miss parts of the edges so just make sure to go back and make sure you really got those. Now press command J to duplicate that layer. What that's going to do is duplicate that selection only so you're left with just that pixie liquid eyeshadow. Go ahead and delete that first pixie layer and rename this new one to pixie. So now what I'm going to do is rotate this liquid eyeshadow about 90 degrees. Try to get it as straight as possible because what we're going to do now is clean up the edges using that rectangular marquee tool. So as you can tell, I'm just basically selecting just a slight sliver of the edge and then pressing delete. What that's going to do is give us a really nice clean line. This is a really quick and easy way to just really sharpen up those edges if it is pixelated or just grainy or whatever, you know. You saw how janky mine looked and now it looks a bomb. So now what we're going to do is add a little bit of extra oomph to this. So I'm just going to scale up my image again just so we can see things better. Now go to FX and press stroke. So stroke is obviously just going to give you a really nice outline for that product and you can actually change the color as well and the size so you can scale it up or down. I usually like to keep mine around like 13 or 16 and then for the color you can just go ahead and either use that color square that comes up or use the eyedropper tool by hovering over your image and selecting whatever color you want. So as you can tell, I'm just trying to pick a color off of my shirt. So this berry color looks good to me. Now we're going to be going in with an outer glow. So this is going to give us a really nice glowy effect. And I actually really like the way that this looks without that stroke. So I'm just going to remove the stroke and mess around with the settings. You can play around with it, do whatever feels right for you. And then I'm going to add a drop shadow as well. Same thing with this drop shadow is going to basically give you even more of a glowy effect, but it's like a dropped shadow. You feel me? <laughs> so now we're just going to mess around with the settings as well. And there we go. Press OK. And that is it. Now, let's say you don't have your own product images. What you can do is take them from online. I don't highly recommend this because, you know, these things can be copyrighted, but here's how to do it anyways. So on the Mac, you want to press Command Shift 4 to screenshot from Sephora's website, for instance, or you could also go to Google and just search for whatever you're looking for and then add PNG at the end. Usually you can find PNGs, but in this case, I didn't. I'm just going to save this anyway, just as an example. And let's try to find something from Drunk Elephant that is a PNG because I know for sure there is one. Come on. Okay, this one, this one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you see how that background has that checkered image going on? That means that it is a transparent image. So more on this later. Just keep that in mind. Okay. So now we're going to drop in that screenshot from the Sephora website and you can tell the quality is honestly not that great. But anyway, it doesn't matter. 
So what you want to do is press Control and Option with that quick selection tool selected to scale up or down the brush and then begin to select the palette. So sometimes it'll miss like the pans for instance or certain words and you want to be really careful with this. Make sure that you take your time, scale down the brush to get the edges, the pans, whatever wording it happens to miss. Then once you have everything nice and selected, go ahead and right click on the layer, press rasterize and then press shift command I and then hit delete. All right, so now I'm gonna scale down this image and start to add the effects. But while I do that, I just wanna talk about what we just did. You know how the first time around we duplicated the layer and that's how we were able to get only that image to show up? Well, what we just did right now is do everything on the same layer. So in Photoshop, there's multiple ways to do one thing to get the same sort of result. So I wanted to show you guys different ways and techniques of getting an image cut out. Feel free to use whichever option is easiest for you. Now here's how to fix some common mistakes when cutting out images. Here is that picture that we got from Google Images. I'm just going to scale it up and pay attention to how part of the image is out of the frame. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. But now what I'm going to do is just use the quick selection tool and begin to cut out the image. So same old, same old. You guys know how to do this by now. We're just going to speed through this. And now what you want to do is after you rename that layer, scale it down. Okay, notice how those top and bottom borders are still there. That's an issue, right? Like, Shireen, how do I get rid of this? Super easy. So what you want to do is just go back to that rectangle marquee tool, select them, and then press delete, and boom, there you go. Oh, you thought we're done? Nah. Let's say you want to add a stroke. So this happens. And you're probably like, Shireen, what on earth? earth is going on. Don't worry, go ahead and add your other effects that you want, press OK, and now we're going to clean this up. This happens when little tiny edges of the image aren't deleted from that original image. It's no big deal. Press on those lines with the eraser tool and they'll just disappear. Super easy. This is a pretty common mistake, so I don't want you guys to freak out when this happens to you. You got this, it's so easy to clean up. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this image now because we don't need it, goodbye. All right, last but not least, here's how to work with PNG images. Okay, remember that drunk elephant product image that we found? That was the PNG, AKA the background is transparent and honestly, these are the easiest images to work with. What you wanna do is press on that layer, press rasterize, and now you can go ahead and scale it and add whatever effects you want. These are really easy because you don't have to worry about taking out the background, it just makes the whole process so much quicker. So honestly, if you can find these, you've struck gold. But again, please keep in mind that oftentimes these images are copyright protected. So just be very careful. The best option is honestly to just take your own pictures and make them into PNGs. Now all I'm doing is just messing around with the placement of the products, the sizes, the outlines, I actually like the way that it looks better without the stroke, so I'm just gonna turn that off for each of those product image layers, continue messing around with the placement, and I think that looks pretty good. So that is it, you guys. That is how to make a beauty guru thumbnail with cutout makeup images. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment down below letting me know what beauty editing 101 tutorial you would like to see next. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye! Bye.